Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Doodle Robot and today we're going to discuss a question that I got from a viewer slash another content creator, Tammy Colors 2. She asked um, me on Instagram to maybe make a video about how I go about choosing my brushes for painting in my coloring books. So we're going to answer that today. We're also going to, my example here is, I'm trying to salvage this book. They said that this book was pristine and in excellent condition, and it arrived with lots of colored pages in it. So I'm, I'm, I'm saving this book from child trauma, basically. Okay, so this one has obviously been colored all over by a child. So as I was painting this, I thought, Oh, you know, Tammy just asked me that question today, so I may as well go ahead and answer her. So let's uh, let me zoom you in here, and we'll we'll talk about my choice of brushes and how I go about picking them for certain areas. Okay, so when I am outlining something, so I I typically go and I I, I mean type. Coloring books have small details in them, so uh, I will typically outline around everything first. And for that, I would use these like teeny tiny brushes, which I actually talked about in another video that I shot. I don't know if they're go if that video is going to air before this one. This is a Nick Pro four over zero. This is an Eboot three over zero. A Transcend. 5 over 0, and another eBoot 5 over 0. My favorite lately has been the Nick Pro. However, in this book, uh, since I'm trying to get rid of some of this stuff with black paint, I have elected, instead of using the liner, the little, the little tiny, teeny brushes, I have elected to outline the whole area that I'm going to paint black with uh, a Posca pen because it's a little quicker, a little easier. However, the only color I really do that with is black because the two blacks match. And I do a, a pretty thin outline um, because I just am giving myself space to do the black line. These, the black paint that I use, Apple Barrel Matte Paint, and the Posca pen have two different sheens on them. So I'm just giving myself a little bit of grace period, period uh, grace area, uh, so that I don't cover up the lines. It just means I can paint a little bit quicker and easier. Okay, so if I were painting a color, say red or orange or something that I didn't have a Posca pen to match, um, I would use a tiny brush to outline everything first. I then went and I used kind of a medium brush. This is a eBoot 2. It's a little bigger and that was just so that I could go around easily and feather it out. Okay? I'm not going to fill the whole area with this teeny little brush. That would be ridiculous. Okay, it would take forever. <laughs> okay? So basically it allows me to go up and then just pull it out. You want to, just a tip, you want to feather out your your lines here. Notice there's not, I, I didn't go like this and leave a line there because you'd be able to see that line when you when you paint the rest of it. So it's always a good idea to feather it out, okay? And you don't have to do it neatly. No, nobody's going to see it later, okay? All right, and then I did the same over here. Now, when I was trying to get into the crack here, of the spine of the book, I switched to still a medium brush here uh, because it's a little bit um, stiffer to get down into that crack. But then I give myself a line here and then I can just block fill the whole thing with a bigger brush. So we got super tiny, medium, and for my larger areas, you know, I could use anything that you have laying around that's big enough. Uh, these are all just cheap brushes. I'm not I'm not buying expensive brushes to use for cheap, cheap acrylic paint and in a coloring book. Um, these are just those package brushes you find at Walmart, Target, online, anywhere, doesn't matter. You could use a round brush. This is a round brush. It's got a round into it. I generally favor those 
for this big area here that we see, I would probably use this brush, a flat brush. It's not the biggest flat brush I have, but I think, I think it's big enough for the space. Okay. You could also, oh, do I even have one? Hold on. Uh, okay. Apparently I have one. You could also use a filbert brush that's with the rounded tip as opposed to the, the flat tip, the straight edge tip. Uh, a lot of people say that these, these, the flat brushes, will, when you paint, will leave lines. Although I paint more like this and I don't get that problem. Uh, but the filbert, the, I don't, I'm not sure if it would work on these cheap brushes, but the filbert is supposed to not leave the lines when you paint, when you paint like that. All right, so that's basically how I go about picking my brushes. Uh, you, you can think of it as kind of small, medium, large, I guess. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's pretty much just that simple. Oh, one more thing, one more tip. I get a lot of people who comment, who say, oh, I could never, I could never do acrylic paint like you do. Mine always comes out streaky. Okay, acrylic paint is, is thin and it, it, and some of these, some of these apple barrel and folk art ones are more one, one coat wonders in some cases, but some, a lot of them are transparent as well. But it comes down from the ages when artists used to, they didn't just, they didn't just, you know, we're in a hurry in modern day society. We just want to paint one coat and be done. <laughs> they used to paint many undercoats. Like if they were painting a portrait or something, they would do the skin undertones as we all have skin undertones. And then they would paint the skin, uh, skin colors on top of that, or the overtones, or the top coats, whatever you want to call it. There would be many layers that the masters, the great artists of you know the Renaissance, would do. Uh, that's where it comes from. Artists that painted in layers. They just did. They didn't think of one coat. They they were very sophisticated in their painting. That's why acrylic paint is thin. So yeah, when I commit to acrylic paint, I know I'm committing to at least two coats in most cases. Sometimes I get lucky and it's one coat. Uh, but two, three, four, five coats, well, you know, whatever it takes. I just like painting. It's my thing. It's, it's painting is a lot less hard on the fingers and the wrist. It's a lot less hard than colored pencils. If you find you're having lots of problems with your wrist, your fingers, your elbows, your shoulders, whatever, maybe, maybe you want to try painting. Okay. So that is basically how I pick my brushes. All right. I thank you for joining me. I appreciate your time. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Live long and prosper. Bye-bye.